All right, in this video, we're going to look at sample data for an experiment in grade 9 advanced science. We were doing um, the heating of copper and sulfur, and we were trying to discover whether mass would change during a chemical change. So in this experiment, we had a test tube that had some copper metal in it and some sulfur powder, yellow sulfur powder. We capped the test tube with a rubber dam that could expand or contract, and then we heated the test tube in a small Bunsen burner flame for about a minute. During the heating, the, 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 the sulfur turned from a yellow powder to a bright red liquid, a dark red liquid. The um, test tube filled up with sulfur vapor. Uh, then we saw a glowing light, a glowing red color inside the test tube, which told us that the reactions had finished. We heated for about a minute in all. At the end, we cooled the test tube and we recorded its mass. So we recorded the mass before we heated, and we recorded the mass after we heated, and we see the sample data here on this uh, data table. So let's go ahead and calculate the change in mass. Now, when you, that may sound simple, change in mass, but there is actually a particular way you have to calculate this. The change in mass is always the final mass, so in this case, the mass after we heated, minus the starting mass. Okay, so it's very important that you subtract like that, the final minus the starting. Don't just take the larger minus the smaller. It's always the final minus the starting. So in this case, we have 35.68, whoops, I just wrote the wrong number down, 35.68. 65 grams is my final mass minus 35.68 grams, which is my starting mass. When I subtract measurements, we know from our rules for significant digits, we base the answer on the number of decimal places. So since both of these numbers have two decimal places, we can keep two decimal places in the answer. We're going to get a negative answer because the mass dropped. The second mass is, is bigger than the first mass in this formula, so I'm going to get a negative answer. So I get negative 0 0.03 grams. That negative sign is very important. It means the mass dropped, right? So the starting mass was bigger than the final mass. When I subtract, I'm taking a smaller number and subtracting a larger number. I get a negative answer. If your mass had increased, then the final mass would have been larger than the starting mass, then you would get a positive answer for the change in mass. So do not just take the larger minus the smaller. Always do the final minus the starting if you're calculating a change in mass. But then we want to also find the percent change in mass. So let's do that. The percent change in mass. To do that, you take your mass change what we just calculated a moment ago, and you divide that by the starting mass. And to get percent, you times by 100. So in this example, the mass change was negative 0.03 grams, divided by the starting mass, which was 35.68 grams, and we times by 100. Notice that the grams are going to cancel out so the percent change will not have any units with it. So negative 0.03 divided by 35.68 times by 100. Now the rule for dividing or multiplying is that we round off the answer based on significant digits, not decimal places. The number on the top of this fraction, 0.03, has one significant digit. The two zeros at the beginning are not significant. The denominator has four significant digits. So I'm going to keep only one significant digit in my percent change. The answer is very small. It turns out that it's negative 0.08%. So it's less than 1%, significantly less, right? All right, so that's how you calculate a change in mass, the final minus the starting mass, and how you'd find the percent change, where you take the mass change and divide by the starting mass. Now let's just talk about what this means before we leave you here. The point of the experiment was 
to find out if mass changes during a chemical reaction. Well, what would be your answer? Did the mass change? Well, somebody who's a concrete thinker would say, yes, the mass changed. It changed by 0.03 grams. It dropped. Well, someone who thought a little bit deeper about this would, would, would understand we're not just asking literally did the mass change at all. We're trying to ask, did the mass change because of the chemical change that was occurring? Now think about that for a minute. Suppose you had a test tube with the copper and sulfur and you measured its mass and then you, you know, you took it to the balance, measured its mass, then you went back to your bench, you put it back in the, in the bin where you took it from, and a few minutes later you went and you massed it again. Is it possible that the second mass, you didn't heat it at all, you just measured the same test tube a few minutes later? Is it possible that the mass would be different than the starting mass, that maybe it's different by 0 0.03 grams? Could that happen? Well, if you imagine the electronic balances that we use, they're not perfect. They do have error in them. So for example, the balance might say 0, 0.00, but it's actually 0, 0.01. Or if you've gone to use the balance, you may notice that the last digit fluctuates because of air currents. So the number you wrote down may be a little bit off than what it actually was. It's also possible, you know, your finger may have been just slightly wet. Maybe there's some sweat on your finger. Or maybe there was a little bit of water on the bench top and you touched it. And then when you touched your test tube, a tiny bit of water got on the test tube. Maybe there was some dirt on the test tube. And when you took it back to your bench after weighing, the dirt came off on your finger. And then when you weighed it the second time, the dirt wasn't there. My point is, there's a whole bunch of possible reasons that have nothing to do with chemical change that could explain why the mass had dropped by 0 0.03 grams. That is such a small difference, 0 0.03, that that could probably simply be attributed to random errors. The error in the electronic balance, for example, the error caused by air currents. That mass change, would, to me, would mean that the mass actually didn't change. This negative 0.03 gram change, to me, that would mean I have not shown that during a chemical change, the mass changed, right? That's such a small change in mass that it's likely due to small random errors that I've just described. Now the question might be asked, well, how big of a change would have had to have happened that you couldn't just attribute it to these random errors? I can't give you an exact answer to that, but I would, my, my gut would say if the mass changed by, I don't know, 0 0.1 or more grams, then that's not just small random errors like we're describing, okay? Now, remember in this experiment that we were heating the test tube with copper and sulfur, there was a rubber dam on the top, and that the purpose of that was to prevent things from escaping from the test tube during the experiment. If something escaped, well, then the mass would definitely drop, right, as we, as we weighed it before and afterwards. Well, was that rubber dam perfect in keeping things from escaping the test tube? If you recall, during the experiment, you could smell in the lab that there was some sulfur in the air. That means no matter how well we tried, some material must be escaping from the test tube. Not because of chemical change, but just because of the design of our experiment, we didn't perfectly prevent that. So there's another reason why that negative 0.03 could have occurred. Maybe something escaped from my test tube. So it's not necessarily because of a chemical change, it's just that my experiment you know, had an error in it. Each of our experiments had different errors that were possible. If you remember when the melting of ice experiment that I demonstrated in a video, maybe condensation appeared on the outside of my vial and I didn't wipe that off. Well, then I might see a small increase in mass. Or maybe during the mixing of two solutions, you spilled one drop of liquid. Well, that would mean the mass could go down by just a tiny bit. So my point is if you see small changes in mass that are even maybe slightly bigger than 0.1, that, those small changes could possibly be attributed to these errors. 
And then you would still conclude that even though there was that small change in mass, that the mass didn't change during chemical change. All right, so if your change in mass could possibly be due to errors in your experiment, then you would have to conclude that we have not shown that mass changed during chemical change. Now, if you didn't make any large errors and the mass did change by some significant amount, maybe half a gram or more, and, and there was no obvious error, then that would raise the possibility that the mass had changed, right? That's possible. But if you just saw some small, small, small change in mass, then my point is you shouldn't say that's because the mass changed in the chemical reaction. More likely, the mass changed because of some small error, either a random error or a very specific error, like gas escaping during the carbon dioxide production in Alka-Seltzer, something like that. Notice that the mass change when expressed as a percent is very low, negative 0.08%. You know, that's such a small percent. So this is almost certainly meaning mass stayed the same during this chemical reaction. So when you're asked, did your results show whether mass changed or not during the chemical reaction, if this was your results, my answer would be, no, that my data did not show that the mass changed. It looks like to me like it's quite possible the mass stays constant during the chemical reaction because this small change is likely due to either a random error or perhaps some sulfur escaping from my test tube. It's not likely due to a change in mass because of chemical change. So I hope that helps. Good luck with your lab reports and we're coming to the end of the unit. Good luck on your tests which are a fast approach.